Hi, I'm Johnny Marks, and welcome to the All-Knowing Podcast. We all have people we admire, heroes, people we look up to, people we try to emulate. At the All-Knowing, we look into people's personalities by using different systems such as numerology, astrology, and life charts, a deep dive and a persona, if you will. It is our hope that we can help break down what makes a person, who they are, their traits, their actions, and their possible beliefs. And in doing so, help you understand if you have similar virtues. Thank you for watching and enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to another episode. I'm Johnny Marks, and today we have a special guest who is an old friend that I ran into this week, and he was fortunate uh, and kind enough, I should say, to uh, agree to sit down and talk with us and tell us about his life, his career, and his um, experiences in Hollywood. His name is uh, Richard Portnow. And a little background, he started in Brooklyn College uh, acting and then went to Cafe La Mama in New York. His first big break was signing with William Morris. And when he auditioned, he booked his first audition, which was a stage production in England called Moon Children. So after that, he took a break. Then after that break, he got back in with another agency called Writers and Artists and then proceeded to book like a madman. Uh, movies such as Sister Act, Good Morning America, Father of the Bride, Trumbo, TV shows uh, such as Hitchcock and Sopranos. So 105 movies later, 135 guest stars uh, later as well in three Broadway plays. Uh, I'd like to introduce Richard Port now. Hey, Richard. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Good morning, Vietnam. Not good morning, America. Oh, <laughs> this back was a movie, not a TV show. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for thank you for the correction. Why don't Why don't you give us a little background about yourself and. And uh, as we said, you started in uh, Brooklyn, right? Yes, that's what I started. I had no intention of becoming an actor. I was in Brooklyn College to avoid okay. Vietnam. If wow. you stayed in school, they couldn't grab you. You were deferred, all right? So I was a terrible student. I was flunking out of school. And my friend, Jerry something, I can't remember his last name. He said, hey man, you're flunking out. I said, yeah, I know. He said, they're going to send your ass to Vietnam. I said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He said, take acting. Guaranteed A. Guaranteed. They want to build your confidence. Always pretty girls in the class. No tests to take. No books to read or papers to write. I said, what do I sign, man? And he was right. I got straight A's. I sucked when I was in college, man. They used to go, <laughs> what are we going to do with this guy? He's terrible, but he's a speech and theater major, we got to put them in something. And they were right. I did not have it in college. But the minute I got out, something clicked. I'm not sure what it was. And I was introduced to Judy Abbott, who was the head of new talent at William Morris, a friend of mine. Otto Solomon was his name. He introduced me and I went in and uh, she looked at this resume, which basically had my name and phone number on it. She said, Richard, you haven't done anything. And I said, yeah, I know. And then she said, but something tells me by looking in your eyes that you can. And that was it. She signed me. And uh, first play, first job I tried out for was Moon Children, done at the most prestigious theater in England, Royal Court Theater. However, I was still taking LSD and uh, we did the play and I kind of lost my way and I quit acting for five years. 
Then I came back to it. I always knew I would. I always knew I had something. I had no technique, but I had, I had the magical it. So I, I knew that I could do something in the business. And when I came back to it, I was at that point in my early 30s. And, and can, I, can I ask you something there? Yeah, anything. So, so basically, um, you're saying that you had an issue with LSD. More than that. Okay. So, um, wow. Uh, so how I'm a child you, of the sixties, man. I get, yeah, Hey, <laughs> uh, you know, so you had a problem for about five years. How did no, I left the business for five years? I had a problem prior to that. Okay. So how did you find your uh, way back to the business? Well, as I say, I knew I wanted to do it. And that if I had to take time off, I would. And, uh, that's when I became a bartender. It took me to Europe. I managed to go to Europe in 10 bar in London. And I went to visit the theater that I had worked at. And it was uh, very bittersweet. So when I came back, I thought I should try it somehow. And there was, I saw an ad in backstage, the newspaper for actors that has casting breakdowns and agent information and all sorts of stuff like that. And it was an ad for car- do voiceovers with cartoon voices, something like that. And I thought, well, that would be a good way to stick my toe in the water. So I took this class and the guy teaching it guaranteed us an agent would show up one night, his agent, and a casting director <laughs> would show up one night, his best friend who was a casting director. When the agent showed up and all of us get up and do these voiceovers, she came up to me at the end of the class and gave me her business card and said, call me Monday. And that started me in commercials. Uh, I did a lot of TV commercials, but I could not get a theatrical agent, someone who's responsible for movie auditions and uh, TV auditions and stage auditions, couldn't get one for love or money. And... Uh, I was, it was daunting, man, because I wasn't knocking it out of the park with commercials. And I saw all my friends who were not involved with show business, making money and buying condos and 300 Z's. And, you know, I was still pulling down 250 bucks a week as a bartender. And then I became friends with a very important woman in the theater, Josephine Abadie, without whom I more than likely would not be sitting here because I wouldn't have had a career. Uh, She was a director, and when I met her, we struck an immediate chord of rapport. She started casting me, and she ran the most important summer theater in America. There were two, Williamstown and the Berkshire Theater Festival. So I did the Berkshire Theater Festival. They were period plays. By then, I was going bald, and my hair was curly, believe it or not. Um, I looked like Billy Crystal with no hair in the middle. And I thought, well, this look doesn't work for plays that are being set in the 1940s and 50s. So I slicked it back, all right? And I took a very objective look at myself and I thought, well, it's show business. What is important when you do business, when you're selling something? Marketing. So I understood how to market myself. And the leading lady of one of the plays very uh, wonderful actress, terrific gal, Anne Toomey. She introduced me to her agent, writers and artists. And uh, I remember when I walked in, I wore a sharp suit, close shave, hair slicked back, and I never sat. I stood for the whole interview. ABC, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, always be closing. And I was closing this guy from the minute I walked in. And I had by then understood how I would be perceived visually and in terms of my physical presence and my voice. And I said to the agent, I play hard edged urban guys. I do not wear a sweater or a hoodie or a flannel shirt. I wear Armani. I don't beat people up. I tell Carmine, Carmine, go show that prick how things work around here. And Carmine beats him up. And I said to the guy, I don't kiss the girl. That's what I knew about myself. And and he said to me, oh, yeah, I said, the only reason I am not doing characters like that in the movies right now 
is because you're not my agent. You get me in the room, I'll knock the fucking ball out of the park. We'll make a lot of money together. His whole, oh, ears open wide. We'll make a lot of money. And then he said, well, I tell you, man, from, uh, from what you did in that play, I, I couldn't really tell much. You were, had a French accent, glasses, and a mustache. You're on stage for two minutes. But the way you're, pre- the way you're pitching yourself, the way you're presenting yourself, I believe you. I'm going to sign you. And that changed everything. So you walk, you you walked in there, complete confidence. Very you, confident. you would you say like it was a role or this was you? I'm a confident guy, and I okay. knew what I was selling, and I knew how to sell it. Got it, got it. Okay. You know? Okay, so then I also knew that that would be the kind of part I'd play over and over and over, but in so doing, after a couple of years, I would establish credibility with the casting community as a movie actor, as a TV actor, and I'd be able to expand my horizons and play uh, stockbrokers or assistant district attorneys or stuff like that. And it worked, you know, I didn't only play wise guys. I played all sorts of characters, lawyers. So my assessment was right, right on the money. Excellent. What would you say are some of your most memorable or favorite roles? All right. Good morning, Vietnam. That was the most exciting job I've ever had in my life. We shot that movie in Bangkok, in Thailand, and uh, I couldn't believe it. One moment I was in New York City, all depressed, because I had turned down a couple of films to do a Broadway play with Jason Robarts. Wow, I'll never get another opportunity to do this. And Barry Levinson, at the opening of Tin Men, which was one of my early films, studio film. He came over to me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing this movie about radio guys because he knew I had a good voice. Long story short, I said, I can't quit the show after Friday. I know you take a long time to make up your mind. And on Thursday, he called me and said, Richard, I can't make up my mind so quickly. The show closed in two nights. And then I got a phone call. I told my agents, let everybody know that was interested in me for those film, three films that I'm available again. And I got a call from Mark Johnson at one in the morning. I'm in New York, real depressed. Mark calls me and says, heard your play closed. I said, yeah, I can really pick them. And he said, well, you know, we can't offer you the part that we were originally interested in you for, but there are other parts. Would you like to join us? I said, where are you calling from, Mark? And he said, Bangkok. I didn't know where Bangkok was. That was one of my favorite jobs. Um, Wow. So so, um, let me ask you, being an actor then and being an actor now, what say you? It's fucked up now, man. It's not at all the way it used to be. There are no longer in-person auditions. It's all done through Zoom and uh, you self-tape where you record yourself with your iPhone, upload that to your computer, send it to the casting office, and they go through them and send them to the producer if they feel that you're right for it. Excuse me. Mm. Vodka. It's great. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, they don't have that anymore. I was real good in the room, you know. Reming with confidence, very relaxed. I would get them to laugh once, and then I would do the material. And I was, I was good, and I was confident, and I was relaxed. That's a good combination. But that's not present anymore. We don't get that. It all has to be done when you record yourself on your iPhone or through Zoom. And you only get to Zoom when the director's really interested in you. That's it. Um, I don't know if they ask you to fly in or if they fly you in for the final meeting or not. I haven't, I haven't gotten that far in a studio film over the past two years. And also, I'm an older guy now, and there are just fewer roles for older guys in the movie business. And I cite Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think they had 148 parts. One old guy, one, played by Bruce Stern, former Oscar nominee. So I'm not pleased, but I'm objective. I'm realistic. 
I don't take it personally. I know that this is what the business is. And the biggest ticket buying demographic is from 18 to 25. They don't want to see guys that are old guys, you know, 50 is as old as they want to see a guy. So that goes against me. And uh, many of my friends who've been very busy over the years, really working actors, character guys that did many, many movies whose work I respect enormously, they've lost their insurance through the union. That's how infrequently they've worked. Uh, so it's daunting, you know, but it is. Uh, I still love the business. I love getting up at five and going to work, hitting the set by seven. I know how movies are made. So I'm pretty savvy as far as that goes. Often, at least a few members of the crew have seen me, maybe even know me. But, you know, I've, I've had a high profile for, what, 35 years, you know? Who would you, who would you say um, your favorite person, actor to work with would be? Would be or has been? Or would let's be. say both. Give me okay. both. Why not? Would be is Tom Hardy. I think oh, he's nice. one of the best out there. Has been. Gosh, that's a tough one. Um, there have been so many movies. Uh, well, I could tell you the favorite director, Barry Levinson. He was my favorite director. And uh, I like the Coen brothers. I did a film for them. And that was one of the few parts in which I would not have changed one moment. Wow. I generally don't like to look at my what I've done, but I watch myself in the movies and I thought, man, I am in the pocket with this part and I wouldn't change anything. I, I saw you in that, and that is classic Richard, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So um, one of the things I mentioned was Sopranos. I'm sure everyone wants to know what that was like. Did you, oh, it was, Gandolfini, were you insane? Like, what, what, tell us. All right. Um, when it was auditioning, I was in New York doing a film, and my agents at the time said they want to see you. Uh, for this show, The Sopranos. I thought it was about music. I didn't know what it was about. They said, no, 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 it's a mob show. And I said, well, <clears throat> excuse me, tell me about the part. They said, it's one day. I said, hold up. I don't do one day parts. You know, then I thought who I was, you know, one day, please. And they prevailed upon me to go in and I got the part. And then they, they kept inviting me back. And I found out the reason that they were inviting me back. They needed a lawyer for another episode. They liked what I did. And Alan Coulter, one of the writing producers said, well, why don't we use Richard Portnell? He was great as Uncle Junior's lawyer, 15 episodes. And wow. the first year, we didn't know what we had. Before it aired, we didn't know anything. Uh, but it, it, it just goes to show you there are no small parts, right? There are small parts. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> one led to 15 man that's not as you know so that was fortunate man you know if alan coulter hadn't spoken up i might not have invited back you know right um right, Gandolfini right. was a prince a terrific guy he used to this is before we started airing every friday night a mountain of sushi would show up and i mean a gigantic pile which he paid for and the crew had it and the actors had it and uh, very generous guy as an actor and a nice guy, a good guy, uh, self-demeaning actually. A bunch of us went out, this is the second year. Okay, so the show was a hit by then. We all go out to the Cafe Luna, I think, in, in New York, down in the village. And uh, there was a whole bunch of us, Big Pussy and Artie Bucco and, uh, Bobby Bacala, all these guys from the show, and me. And, uh, you know, Jimmy had big appetites, and he was loaded, and he got gets up, and he goes, I'm just a big drunk dip. I'm a big fat guinea who got lucky. And we all said, you're right, you motherfucker. <laughs> all the character guys that were playing Italians in, in New York wanted that part. And uh, Jimmy got it hands down. He's a terrific actor. Terrific yeah. actor. Definitely. I was very much aware of him before I met him. He was wonderful in True Romance. And ah, and made, like such a complete reversal. 
for sure. And, yeah. and, and he didn't, for lack of a better word, he didn't play the gay, you know, I hope I'm, you know, a, a teaser alert or, or whatever they call it. But uh, he, you know, it was just one of the uh, aspects of the character. And I was blown away by that because so many actors with less, uh, less experience would have totally played the game. But he, I mean, it was just a part of the character for him and nailed it. Yeah, okay, yeah. so last question before we get over to our uh, guy, Joseph. Um, looking back, what is your proudest moment? What is your proudest, is it, I know you mentioned um, Cone Brothers. Uh, which which part? Which part? You know, when you're laying in, on that bed someday, that you look back and you said, "That was the part I'm really proud of." Well, there were a couple. I got to tell you, I was very proud of Tin Men, Barry Levinson's film. I thought that uh, he let us go. He let us improv, and I thought that I was really really there with the character, yeah. with the rest of the guys. And, you know, I would. Yeah. I, I gotta say, sorry, I got to say something, folks. Richard, in knowing Richard, he's one of the greatest improvisers on the spot, in the moment. First time I met him, we I think we met in the gym. And from then on, he's just someone that, you can start an improvisation with. He formulates his character and just bounces right off you and is a great improviser. So sorry to interrupt, but the guy's amazing with the improv for sure. Thank you. Um, what other part did I love? I loved what I did in Barton. Did, did, you, work, did you work with Robin Williams? Did you have- I did I, not I spent have a, scenes I, with Rob. Okay. No, okay. But you know, I met him on set, and he was a right, right. lovely man, really warm, and uh, a real guy. You know, he did not carry on on a one-to-one -one basis. Right. He was a you know just a regular guy who didn't uh, try to do shtick or voices or anything. But right. when the two or three guys were there, he couldn't resist. He was just joking and you know falling Cons into the character. consummate performer. Yeah, consummate performer, yeah. lovely man, really gentle guy. And I remember uh, from Good Morning Vietnam, I wound up in L.A. And I was on the Paramount lot a few months later, and uh, I heard that Robin was shooting the Fisher King on the lot. So I went over and uh, I walked into the green room and the makeup artist was there and we had worked on something else. And she introduced me to the AD. He said, Richard Portnow is waiting in the green room. When the red bell, when the, when the red light went on or whatever, the bells went on, he walks into the green, green room and he sees me and he goes, ho, ho, a Portnow. And he gave me a big hug. Nice. You know, really got me. Terrific guy. Nice. We all devastated when we lost him. You know. Yeah. Trouble, trouble. Um, so I, I just want to end on this note, um, Richard was nice enough to work a project with us. And um, I was able oh, to real watch on that project. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Shame. I was able to watch, let me, let me finish. <laughs> I was able to watch the work. We weren't, we weren't, we weren't in the same scenes, but I tell you, uh, the work that you did was solid. And what you created was definitely memorable. It's yet to be released, but I'm telling you, if anyone out there is looking for a great actor, an actor's actor, I mean, you blow me, you know, you said out of all the people you say Tom Hardy. And it's like, you're, you're, you're the older Tom Hardy in my book, because that, that, that guy's amazing as well. He's all over the place and you have that, potential to that do that type of work so anyone out there i vouch for the guy that being said let's head on over to joseph joseph are you there hello joseph 
I'm going to give you uh, your info. It's January 26th at 3.35 in the afternoon in Brooklyn, New York. Joseph, please. Joseph. Yeah, okay, I got it. Thank you there so much. I've been greatly enjoying this interview. Very fascinating. Uh, interview with a fascinating man. Uh, I was looking at your astrology chart and gathering in psychic impressions as we speak. You know, I use also uh, numerology and uh, Myers Briggs and a whole bunch of different systems for personality analysis of my clients. You have what we call, I noticed right away, a grand trine in the air signs. Uh, Neptune and Libra, planet Uranus and Gemini conjunct your north node of the moon and sun in Aquarius, of course. And so you're one of the most receptive, clear, buoyant, unblocked people around. You are, you're tough. You know who you are because you got Saturn in the first house in Leo. You're, you got a streetwise quality, obviously. Did you hang out with the hoods a little bit in your youth, in your wild Absolutely. youth? Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. best friends, some of them, uh, their dads were connected, man, and they had... Uh, done some serious damage. They worked with the Vito Genovese crime organization. Oh. And uh, one of them was shot dead in the street on Lexington Avenue. Ouch. There were, there were some bad guys. But my friends were okay. It's just their, you know, the, the nuclear family had some very uh, questionable characters. Well, you also have Mars conjunct your sun. Mars is the planet of aggressiveness. Also in Aquarius, conjunct your sun in Aquarius. What that means to us astrologers is that you are a lawyer by nature. You do have tremendous uh, ability in diplomacy and negotiation. You're not a guy who gets taken advantage of at all. Oh. You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Aquarius has three levels, air, ice, and water. Air is like light and fun like, oh, Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland, uh, Fabian, oh, um, Lana Turner, kind of light and clear and airy, Burt Reynolds, Paul Newman, when his more lighter roles. Ice is tough, and that's where you come in. That's like Gene Hackman and the French Connection. He is a tough guy. Yeah. Oh, is he really tough? Oh, yeah. It was a terrific story about Gene. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what an incredible performance. And like Gene... You have tremendous range, and Aquariuses do tend to have that. You can play a kind of a nerd like you did in Good Morning Vietnam, and you can play a, uh, a, the exact opposite, a real savvy Ghanif in, uh, in um, The Sopranos, and you can play a mean-spirited, aggressive detective like in one of my favorite movies of all time, Barton Fink. You know, uh, you notice he's not writing it down. You know, because, you know, you, you're, you're like very strong. So, um, but I noticed the one thing with Saturn in the first house, you often play heavies because Saturn's kind of a heavy planet, a serious planet. You can play heavies, maybe even thugs, the bad cop and the good cop, bad cop uh, duo. You can play, um, uh, you know, tough guys like, and the lawyer. You can play like shrewd and manipulative. Have you ever played a part that you really maybe wanted to play, which would have been more like uh, the hero, the good guy, the, the pure of heart guy? I don't think so. No. Have you ever wanted to play that kind of part? Yes, a close friend of mine, a writer director who I became very tight with, we have good friends, Joe Otting, he lives in Chicago. He asked me the same question, is there a part you haven't played that you'd like to? And there is, I knew right away, I'd like to play a man who has a checkered past, who uh, basically was a career criminal. And in the autumn of his years, he realizes that his life has been a waste. He hasn't contributed anything positive to anyone. So he decides to go home, wherever that might be. And when he's there, he befriends a single mom and her daughter that live on a farm. What he doesn't know is that there is a criminal element uh, in this small town. Long story short, the criminal element kidnaps the mother and the daughter. All right, now I've become very close with them. So I, uh, I redeem myself by an act of self-sacrifice. I save them knowing I'm gonna be shot to death. And that's the story I'd like to tell. 
I turned out to be an altruistic man. Did you write that, that Richard? No, no. <laughs> Joseph, is that, a, is that Aquarian right there? I mean, he just wrote a <laughs> script in Aquarian. front of our eyes. Yeah, it reminds me of The Cooler with, I forget his name. James, uh, James uh, oh boy, I forget his name too. Right. I worked uh, with him, he's terrific. Yeah. The Cooler though, yeah, good yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Macy, actually. Uh, William Macy. H. Macy, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and... Uh, but he takes kind of a wimpy character in that. You know, you're more, you remind me of another one where um, the guy goes to Vegas, he's a hood, and- uh, James Kahn? No. I no. Think I he could him. play, he could play a James Kahn. James, hey, uh, uh, Richard, James Kahn and Thief. Great. I see Richard really as a character, a uh, high character, character actor, of course, but high character. And that's what, you know, also uh, Tom Hanks and that Redemption movie, I forget the name of it, uh, you know, where he's a hood who ends up trying to save. Oh, yes. Um, Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition. Yeah. Perdition, yeah. And, uh, you know, also, just as an aside, I noticed that you have, like, uh, you know, you could do the lead in the George Carlin story. Wow. You tell me I sound like him. Yeah, you know, and, you know, there could be a young uh, actor who plays him young in his younger years. But, I mean, you sound like him, you look like him. And there's, I've met him. What a great man. Uh, yeah, never you know, met you, him. yeah, great man. You have tremendous character and idealism. I'm looking a bit more at some things. Yeah, I notice you got Moon and Pisces conjunct your midheaven. And that's very sweet, loving, idealistic, humanitarian, caring. And that comes through because you're like the hard ass with a heart, you know? And uh, that makes you three-dimensional. You're likable even when you're not likable. And that's a, a phenomenal quality you have. I predict your best work is ahead for you. I would love to you see really? you. Yeah, I would love to see you pitch the George Carlin story. I would love to see you pitch the movie you just mentioned. Uh, I would love to see you shoot it on a shoestring yourself, you know, because nowadays with indie media, people are doing all kinds of things on their own. Yes, yeah. you know? and, well, uh, I'd I'll love to tell the story, you know, but I, I'm not a writer and I've tried to write uh, a movie. I did the first act and then I hit the second act wall. Um, I think Joe could write it, Joe Odding, the guy I mentioned. Joe, do you, Joe, do you find him to be a uh, perfectionist? Uh, yeah, absolutely a perfectionist, sure. And that may yeah, you're absolutely. right because you have a hard time just letting go and winging it or brainstorming. You probably should write with a younger writer, you know, who's more fun and crazy, you know, because that would bring out your inner genius. Aquarius is the most successful sign of the zodiac. I mentioned air, right. and then there's water. The air of ideas becomes the ice of toughness, like General Douglas MacArthur or Dick Cheney, you know, and then the water is the water of compassion, like um, Charles Dickens, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, Susan B. Anthony. You're all three. You're a very three-dimensional human being, so you can function in any social circles. And people are so important to you because you got son in the seventh house of partnerships. You really bring out the best in the people that you're with. You're a character, but you got a heart of gold, and you always try to see the best in people, but you can still give it to them on the chops, you know. So you're part lawyer, part lover, part part humanitarian, part disciplinarian. You know, I you don't mention something here. Excuse me. I got to mention something that. Sure, please, I, please. I'd like your input on this. I have a very short fuse, and I get into confrontations on the street that come very close to becoming physical. Mars I'm not a kid. Sun. Mars can jump sun. Excuse me, go ahead, please, Richard. You know, I, I'm not a kid anymore. And I used to box in my head. I think, yeah, man, I can pepper this guy and hook him in, in the kidneys or whatever. And uh, the reality is I would get beaten to a pole. And, uh, but I still have a confrontational aspect to my personality. Um, 
And sometimes it's really out of hand. Um, but on the same, uh, on, a, on the opposite side, I've been a volunteer at the Children's Hospital LA for 12 years. And I hold sick babies and I try to make them feel better. So there are those two sides of me. One you would not want to meet if he was in a bad mood. And the other, yeah, well, look at this nice guy. So I don't know if that fits into your reading. Yeah, it, to it totally does. And it is wonderful for you as an actor, because as I mentioned, you can play an incredible range of people. You know, you got Saturn, which is very serious, kind of uptight in the first house. So you play uptight businessmen or cops or lawyers really perfectly. I mean, you, it's like you don't care uh, at all about the feelings of the client as much as getting the job done right. You know, that's very clear in the way you present yourself in a very mature responsible and kind of hard-headed manner but you're also sweet i mean you know that the character in um in a, a good morning vietnam is like a likable dweeb kind of you know he's kind of like really really a nice guy and you have that nice guy so you're a chameleon you don't even know who you like a lot of actors you don't know who you are until you're on stage then you know who you are at least that part of you is there what part of what screenplay is going to present all of you? Well, the one that you just pitched that that works great for you. And I would recommend you do that screenplay. And, uh, you know, with maybe with on spec with a uh, with a young screenwriter on the way up and that you pitch it around. And I recommend that you shoot demos for it and that you show those around. Your best days are yet ahead. You are going to your third level. Everybody has three levels in their art beginner. Uh, um, a pro and impresario or uh, or uh, virtuoso, you're still going to your virtuoso level, and uh, you know you've always been giving virtuoso performances in character roles, but you can be a lead because you're you're with the moon conjunct the in Pisces in the tenth. It's all about heart, and that's what you're going to show to people this tremendous heart that you have, and I and people really like you. OK, people like you. They don't know why, because you're kind of a tough Brooklyn kid. But, you know, you're still just a real sweetheart. And there's something in your very mature ap approach to life that is very mature and very thoughtful and very conscientious and very real, authentic. And that authentic quality you have can take you to your virtuoso role. And I, for one, will not Anytime I ever see you, I'm not going to let you rest until I know you're doing that, because that's what you're supposed to do. And that's Aquarius. They share the greatest spiritual iconic role model for humanity. It's like uh, St. Thomas More played by uh, Schofield. Oh, that's total Aquarius. Yeah, Paul Schofield. And uh, it's like, uh, and it can be silly. It can be uh, uh, Burt Reynolds and Smokey and the Bandit. Very all-American role. Paul Newman and the verdict. Okay, we're to, Aquarians are about morality, but people's morality, not artificial morality, being a good person in a bad world. That's where you are going to there you go. I would lay book on you. Because you're great. Richard, I, one time I had a teacher that told me, and I think it's something that we share. And it helped me a great deal. I had a, the light bulb went on for me. And she goes, oh, I get it. And I was like, what's that? What do you get? She goes, you're an idealist. And I was like, at the time, I didn't know what an idealist was. And I was like, what's that? She goes, well, you think things should be a certain way. And they're not. So you get impatient. It irritates you. But I'll say one thing, my friend. And I was like, what's that? She goes, you're an idealist, but it's not an ideal world. I walked, away, I walked away and I relaxed a little bit because I think you and I and a lot of people have high standards. And we like things done as best as possible. Jack, if I'd shut up, I'll put you back in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> or, or when they don't meet it, 
we get disappointed and we get irritable. So, I mean, that being said, I mean, uh, Joseph, you're spot on. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, when you talk about irritable, the planet Saturn, which is a difficult planet, has been in Aquarius the last year and a half. And so I sure you've been kind of pissed off and impatient and frustrated, uh, Richard, because you know you're not getting these roles that you that you now have the great skill and maturity to be able to nail. But you can make these roles yourself through self-promotion. I mean, you know, many actors have done that, Sly Stallone, for example. But uh, also the planet Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. The mortgage meltdown, the bomb administration. Lately, it was conjunct Saturn during the COVID scandemic. Just happened over the last two years. So right now, Pluto is moving forward. It's going to enter Aquarius in a year or two, and it's going to be there for 20, 30 years. At your, you know, I mean, you're so young for your age. You can do anything, and you're in great shape. The Pluto and Aquarius will bring you higher level power, higher level artistry. And so you don't even have to worry about it. But if you meet the universe halfway, it'll blow your mind. You, you could become like another Aquarius, Lee Marvin, played a lot of heavies. Yep. And then Point Blank, he got his Point big Blank, break. Brilliant film. Yeah, brilliant film. Point Blank, he got his big break and he became an anti-hero. Paul Newman, anti-hero. He and I were born on the same day. You and Paul? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, uh, and, and um, HUD became an incredible anti-hero. That gave him muscle, see? One of my, one, one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, uh, incredible. Amazing. Larry McMurtry story, incredible. Um, so, you know, I, I would definitely, and, you, and also another thing I noticed about you, you'd be absolutely fantastic, Richard, doing man in the street interviews as a journalist, as a, you know, gonzo journalist, because they're, they're the vo Aquarius is the voice of truth. Anybody listens to your platinum voice, they know you're telling the truth. You got the street cred, okay? And if you interview people, it's gonna be like a, a studs turkle, you know, in a working, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you because you you can deal with uh, down, you know, uh, um, a, a skip, <laughs> And you can deal with uh, uh, with uh, troublesome dogs, you know. <laughs> you can deal with uh, uh, empresses, and not not lose your common touch, like uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name, the poet says, you know. I keep looking in different places because your image shifts around. Now you're up in the right hand corner of the screen. We astrologers can be kind of shifty. Yeah, so that's why my <laughs> eyes keep going back and forth. I, I see. Well, you know, you you don't miss a, a thing anyway. Your left brain, right brain. Pat, let me let me put my cheaters on and take it. Oh, I looked at your face, by the way. You got long ears, and that's long shows, ears. Long ears. That shows long life. The Buddha has long ears. Really? Your nose also is long for the size of your face, which shows that you um you have strong self. You know who you are. Nobody can push you around, and uh, you know um. You, you can probably up. tell from the very beginning when I think, who did I yell at? I yelled at Aaron. Let me speak. Let me speak. Yeah, exactly. Give <laughs> the very beginning of this uh, en enterprise here. I was uh, displaying the questions of a psychic. Push me around, man. Uh, uh, pardon me for interrupting. Are there any questions of a psychic or a spiritual or creative uh, nature? I mean, you know, you've got everything covered. I would just say, Never hide your light under a bushel. You got moon and Pisces, beautiful placement at the top of the sky, conjunct the mid heaven. You were born to be famous and successful, sharing a beautiful spirit with people in the guise of a hard ass uh, thug lawyer cop, you know, because it's really when people know you, they see how lovable you are. And that's what the screen's going to bring out because you're once again, you're going to your third plateau. And this is in the process of happening. So don't be disheartened. It's always darkest before the dawn. But you can make it happen because you get along real well with people. You could work with an ensemble really well. Richard. Ooh. Richard. Yeah. Richard, what was the role you played where you were the chor choreographer? 
You no. want to, you want to, uh, people watching, if you want to see some, someone like, who is that? That's, you know, uh, we're, you know, completely opposite of Richard. What, what was the project? It was called The Squeeze with Michael Keaton and Ray Don Chang and Meatloaf. And, yeah. Uh, I saw, I saw a clip of that and I was just sitting there like, yeah. Whoa. Ooh, no. I'll tell you something, John. When I watch myself in that film, I think to myself, man, you've never been that free. I was doing things in the moment that I had not thought about, that I had not written about in my homework, just living on the set, you know, very much in the moment. I was really happy with that part and uh, the movie didn't go anywhere i think had if it had things could have been very different i love doing that part they let me design my own costume you know, nice. the, and what, what, what was the role and title again uh, i was reuben that's what yeah. was the name of my character i based him on a waiter in a coffee shop in greenwich village named otavio and uh, it was called the bagel you got a bagel with everything if you went in there and ordered a bagel, they'd ask you if you wanted a bagel with that. Everything came with a bagel. So this guy, Otavio, would come to your table and he would say, you like a bagel? <laughs> okay, I'll have a bagel. You like a butter? <laughs> sure, I'll have a butter. But a bagel? I thought, this guy is wild. I got Joseph, that, there, there's this yeah. playful side, Joseph. There's this playful side. Yeah, you yeah. It, it can tend to come out after time or maybe a drink or two, or he gets to know yeah. him. He also has, Richard also has his upper lip is half the width of his lower lip. And newscasters have that. It shows he doesn't talk much at first, but once he gets going, he's, he's the guy who kissed the Blarney Stone. Nice. A lot of magic comes out of that mouth. I try to be, I try to keep my ears open and my mouth shut, especially <laughs> in the makeup trailer, because you can learn a lot about what's going on on the set in the makeup trailer. And I just sit there and I listen. And uh, Well, Aquarius, Aquarius is the ultimate group guy. You know, they are a member of the team. They have a group consciousness. We just did a reading for um, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, the great soccer player, Aquarius. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they're the all American or the all human every day, you know, the characters of Charles Dickens. So your personable charm, you ever notice how most people are very self-absorbed? Oh, yeah. sure. You know, it's like me, 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 and I got a problem. And, uh, you know, why is he getting more uh, airtime than me? And it's all that stuff. Whereas you, you instinctively know because you're a very collaborative ensemble player that if other actors with you are look good, you look good. Because, you you know, you're the guy who will pass the ball, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so... You know, Aquarius is the most successful of signs because of their social ability. But you also are tough. You got that Mars conjunct your son. You were talking about uh, getting in, in conflicts in the street. It'll always be because somebody's uh, dishonest or belittling or egomaniacal or rude. You know, you're trying Better to not abuse a dog or an old person or a child when you're around me. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I will step up. You know, well, in some of your roles, very important to me. In some of your roles, you could shoot them. You know, <laughs> Mars conjunct Sun, Mars planet of aggressiveness, opposite Saturn and Leo. There's also a sense of constraint about you, which the actors in those other gangster gone good movies we were talking about have. They they don't shoot the guy; they actually set him up to shoot himself. You see, and therefore they protect the innocent. They protect themselves, and they uh, allow the bad guy to get hoist by his own petard. Mm -hmm. you know, the deal is, you know, and you also have a very high forehead. Have you ever been to Reseda? All the way back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you headline, you ever been to Reseda? Sorry, okay. <laughs> but yeah, at any rate, that shows great intelligence. And you got the Aquarian waves in your forehead. They have those waves, which shows great wisdom. You're always wanting to do the right thing, and you're always doing the right thing. That's just between you and Virgo. I'm a Virgo. I always worry about them by doing the right thing, but I may or may not, not do the right thing. Aquarius yeah. does the right thing and makes it work. Wow. 
Excellent. Uh, so any final questions, Richard? From me to yeah. you? No, to 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 jo to Joseph. Uh, um, career. I mean, he said a lot of great things. Yeah. Uh, well, close a lot of it was right on the money, right on the money. Uh, and, I, you know, I was not always a man who gave when I was in my 30s and 40s and 50s. It was all about me, 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 me. And then at a certain point, I changed. And perhaps it was when I discovered uh, a relationship with a higher power and I started giving. And uh, when I walk into the children's hospital, I feel like I'm doing something important, something that I would not have partaken of years ago. And I feel like I'm, I've had a blessed life, let's face it, you know, because I mean, I've done so much work and I have absolutely no talent and I've worked and worked and worked. That was supposed to make you laugh, fellas. Um, <laughs> we're, we, we're, we're, we're laughing on the inside, man. <laughs> oh, that was a joke, okay. <laughs> um, well, I give back now, you know, because I've been privileged and I feel it's just as important to give back as to receive and i like to give back it makes me feel really good um i also do i, I do volunteer work with an animal organization uh, and uh i i'm a benefactor of another animal organization you know i really uh i speak for the week man well That's you know good. you got saturn in the first saturn's the planet of age but it's weird the way it works because it's like the old saying um the body is born young and grows old. That's life's tragedy. But the soul is born old and grows young. That's life's comedy. So you are younger than you've ever been in your life. You were probably a kind of a kind of a feisty curmudgeon when you were a kid. I was you, a dick. Let's face you were it. Everybody and you let them know it, you know. <laughs> and now you have you're philosophically deep and you see the failings of people and you love them not even just in spite of them, but because of them. So there's a great sense of kindness that emanates from you. And uh, that has to go on camera. That has to, that has to be shown. So mm -hmm. don't deny your dream, Richard Portnow. You are a virtuoso with a high moral message for humanity, and it will come out. I believe that strongly. Excellent. I like it. I like that message. I like Excellent. what you have to say, you know. Thank it's, you. You validate me and you give me confidence about my future, which sometimes lately I have been questioning, you know. Mm. That's great. Richard, when you hear the reading um, on a scale zero to 100, if you could just give me an idea, like how accurate did you feel that was, you know? A lot of it was very accurate, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, I don't know if having your palm read links up to astrology at all. You can hold it up. You want to hold it up? Yeah. Okay. This line here shows a brilliant, intelligent, high-minded, successful man. But this line here shows nothing but trouble. Ac no, actually, <laughs> you, got a double, you got a double line of mercury. I have never seen that as pronounced. It, it's the thing, it's the double lines that go up to your mercury, which goes way out. You got long fingers and your little finger called the mercury finger goes way out, which shows you're very independently voiced. You always have a totally independent point of view. You also have a really strong mound of Venus for what is otherwise the philosophical and somewhat bony hand. The mound of Venus is at the base of your uh, thumb and it shows you're a very loving and romantic guy. OK, but, you know, you, your mind is sharp, so it kind of knows better. And you got, can I say again, your, your uh, right hand, please? Can I, this is my right hand. I've broken this hand three times. Wow, yeah. It might look a little it's weird. It's kind of weird, you know. It's got weird markings in it. Yeah. And it's got the M in it, which is like, it shows an M. And um, Magnifico. Goes, your headline goes into a girdle of Venus, which shows you're ultimately a ar total artist. You're an aesthetically oriented guy. You're probably a um, a four with a three wing. 
I believe that the four in Enneagrams, the four is the artist and the three is the achiever. Well, well, you know, you always wanted to be great. You always wanted to be successful. Is that fair to say? I would say when I got out of school, um, no, even when I was in school, I wanted to be uh, one of the popular guys, one of the sure. important guys. And, was there something you I were saw really that. Or was that socializing you were really great at? Or did you have a certain skill that set you apart from the other kids? I had a skill at uh, promoting myself. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know how to meet anybody, right? Say again? You know how to be in with the in crowd and to meet anybody. Uh -huh. And to uh, put a, foot, a good foot forward, balanced between self-assertiveness and thoughtfulness towards the other person. You're a balancer. You're incredibly good at balancing those things. You know, a lot of what you've been saying, I think, occurred later for me, not when I was a young man. I see. It may have been incipient. It may have been in there. Yeah. yeah. Saturn and Leo, by the way, you talked about this before. Saturn and Leo in the first house can be arrogant. We find Saturn and Leo people like our Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Hulk Hogan, both with Saturn conjunct their son and Leo, uh, Donald Trump, Saturn and Leo. Uh, he's got Leo rising too. So you got the sign Cancer rising, which is the kind hearted one, but a little bit cynical and hard shell. You, do you like to eat or cook or share meals with your friends? No. Just, no, you don't like to. <laughs> I like to go out to dinner, but I don't cook. I, well, I was slating over the microwave last night for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> Have you had like your own personal bar that your friends can gather around and? Oh, well, I have a bunch of close friends out here. Yeah. And we go out to dinner, not as a group, usually as one-on-one, -on -one, but I've got quite a few friends. I've been blessed that way. Um, now, the reason I ask you about we're, we're my palm. Same. Oh, yeah, your palm. Go ahead. Because when I was in my 20s, a very popular director, theater director, said, oh, let me read your palm. And uh, all I wanted to know when he was reading my palm is, am I going to be successful in the movies? And he said, yes, but not until later in life. And he was right. I didn't break through until I was 37, 38. I think I was 38. That's why I asked if it links up to your reading. Uh, palm reading is, is well, the, about the astrology. The astrology, the palmistry, the face reading, the eye reading. I do irritability uh, too. Uh, the uh, numerology, uh -huh. the uh, um, uh, name interpretation, uh, you know, anagrams. I do, I don't know, 20 or 30 different systems because I want to, because people are like living in a temple and the more windows you have in the temple, the more clearly you can see them. And the body is the temple. So all these things are symbolic and they reveal aspects of human nature. You know, even, uh, you know, your ears go out a bit more than a lot of people's, which shows that you have good hand-eye coordination or you can see things clearly right in front of you. Good eye you play pool or things like that? Say again? Play pool or games? No, the only sport I've ever taken up was boxing. Right, was yeah. How many fights did you do? 117 fights. I won 116, lost one. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. No, I, I fought as an amateur when I was a youngster. Well, I feel like punching you out right now. <laughs> um, I saw no return in trying to become a professional fighter oh. because uh, you get your brain, brain scrambled. I fought from the age of, I guess, about 10. There was an outfit called the Police Athletic League, PAL, in New York, where they forced kids to try three sports, basketball, baseball, and boxing, to try and keep them off the streets, you know, get the kid interested in the sport. And uh, I was terrible at basketball. I could hit, but I couldn't catch in baseball. And I didn't know how to box, but they saw that when I got punched in the face, I didn't cry. This was like 10 years old. And they figured, well, you know, a kid can take a punch, let's encourage him. But I was really, I never thought I was any good because even though I had a terrific defensive tactic, I would block the punches with my face. You know, it still didn't. 
That's supposed to get a laugh. <laughs> I got it. I got it. And I was a good bleeder, you know. You you blow on me, I start bleeding. Um, so that's really the only sport I took up. One more thing I really wanted to mention: you have what we call North Node of the Moon and the sign Gemini conjunct the planet Uranus in Gemini, which was discovered in Gemini during the American Revolution, recurred in Gemini during the Civil War and World War II. What this means is you have genius in your nature. You are genius particularly for social interaction. You, I believe you are a role model to all everybody in your set about proper social comportment. Because people give it to each other on the, on the chin a lot, or on the chops, but they can't go too far. Or, and they can't be wimps. So you go right in the middle. You go right in the middle and you set the tone for the social interaction with people. He, and, he, he, he's, definitely, he's definitely quick on his feet. And Richard, I, 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 I think it's almost like that, that role, like the, the, you know, you have the mafia boss and he cracks a joke and the capos or the people around him don't know if he's joking or not. So they don't want to laugh to offend him and possibly get, you know, so it, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing, Richard, because to listen to you, it tends to put you on guard where we're not going to be laughing out loud. So mm -hmm. a lot of the things you say, since I've known you, um, I, they call it laughing inside. It's like, right. I, 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 I laugh inside. Let me, let me ask you this. From what he's told you, scale of one to 10, being accurate and on the money, what would you, I mean, and please feel free to, to rate that on how spot on Joseph I was. I would say between zero and minus 10. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, now I explained it. Now we're all laughing. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, I think you're up there, six or more, about six to seven. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Personally, I have never. Uh, I've always discounted astrology. I have to be very honest with you. One of my best friends, we almost grew up together. I've known him since we were 14. He has an astrologer and, you know, he believes wholeheartedly in her. She helps him with his life and he, uh, he's been doing it for many, many years. And uh, I would love him to talk with you. You know, I don't know if that would There you go. So, so Richard... Richard, when when uh, when we're done with this, and uh, next week when you get the role of a lifetime, then we're going to see if you believe. And you know when we pitch the uh, George Carlin, uh, you know biography, and you're playing the older George Carlin, then we'll have you back and say, <laughs> you know, may I hold with Joe. The title, yeah, 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 yeah. The title would be "You Ain't in It." You know, like he says, uh, it's all a big club and you ain't in it. You ain't there in you it. go. There you go. Is it so what, I, what I get a lot on the street is, hey, you're that guy. I've seen you in everything. And then, yeah. um, uh, do you know my name? No, man, I don't. But you're that guy. I've seen you in everything. I get that a lot, you know. Because they don't know my name. They don't put the name together with the face. Okay, and, well, it's, what you've done, you done this with us so now everyone's going to know your name i'm going to know my name and face together and let's, let's uh, all say my name in unison <laughs> <laughs> but no but to come, so coming up all right so let's get this to a wrap because i mean we're you guys are the type of guys i could talk to forever but um i just want to say richard you are definitely one of the most fascinating talented aspiring guys that I've met since I've been in Hollywood more and more and more. Yeah. Put, uh, put more in my PayPal, please. Uh, but that, but that being said, um, just, just amazing to watch, amazing to watch as a character uh, uh, actor or as a lead actor. And um, I'm excited. I mean, my experience with Joseph, he's spot on. So I'm excited to hear that your best work. Oh, is I'm excited. Yeah, your best work is yet to come, 
and I look forward to seeing that. So um, I want to say thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. Jo Joseph, you let me talk here. about my acting techniques, though. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. No, well, hey, hey, you get that role, you come back. Come back. And then you. And you yeah, how you I do up. it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you for sharing. Thank My you. Pleasure. Thank you. Great thank to you meet you. Great to meet you. You're just a great guy, a real pleasure. Thank you.